There's this. Yep. Three. Oh, wait. Yeah, okay. Three, two, one. Welcome back. This is episode four, I want to say, of the card review, and we are moving on. This is uh, this is neutrals, and uh, it is commons and rares still. Commons and rares in uh, in the neutral set. Um, this is the Lightforge tier list. It is available at the Lightforge dot com the lightforge.com lightforge.com points you to like a printing company or something uh it's i don't know we couldn't get the domain name because they existed uh so we're at the lightforge.com if you're wondering and um yeah let's uh let's let's keep going uh this is we're now moving on to like the actual game right we've, we're done with the setup we talked about the importance of three drops now now we're going to start with the actual game um and for four drops why don't we talk about why don't we start with a good card a really good card a card that's better than Cult Master. Yes, I just said better than Cult Master. Wow. All right. So we're starting with Keening Banshee, which is a four mana five five that says whenever you play a card, remove the top three cards of your deck. So um, we have seen this effect before, right? In terms of uh, we've seen it with Fell Reaver, uh, mm -hmm. and we've seen seen other discard. Um, mechanics as well what does it mean to remove the top three cards of your deck it means nothing unless you go into fatigue yes That's basically it and also unlike fell reaver in which your opponent sort of controls what happens right they can keep on freezing it mm -hmm. and they can keep on um uh you know just just playing small cards as well with keening banshee you're probably just uh, removing like three cards or six cards from your deck, which doesn't make any difference in the vast majority of your games. So this just becomes a four mana five five, which is amazing. Yep. That's really freaking good, um, and it just dominates uh, a lot of similar drops on that turn. Yeah. So this is how important a good three drop is. I just want to go back to Hild near Frost Rider again. Um, like, it is a 182 right now. It's probably going to move a little bit because we're changing freeze a little bit. And, um, also, um, there is, uh, like, you know, we're, we're reviewing it a little. But it's not going to move that far. And this is a 129. And this ability is clearly less of a negative, right? Yeah. Like, Kill Near Frost Rider could still screw up your board sometime in the late game. It probably won't, but it could. Keening Banshee almost never screws you over. What are you going to do? If you play it on four, they play something, you either trade with it and then you don't lose any cards, right? Or you eat it more likely. You kill it and this stays alive. And the next turn, uh, like uh, the next turn you kill it and it stays alive. And then the next turn after that, it's still alive. And you will have to uh, play a card and you will discard three cards, right? And so over here, you have now discarded six cards. Because the first turn it, uh, that, uh, that it was able to have initiative on the board, you played a card, a five drop or whatever, right? You discarded a card. And the next turn, it was still alive and you discard another card. That's like the worst discard scenario. More likely, even if you eat someone after, your, after the first turn it's alive, so on turn five you eat someone, by turn six, you will throw this into another minion to just get a trade. And then you play the card. And so it only discards three cards. So in the vast, vast, vast majority of the situations, it's only even discarding three cards. So unless you're actually going three cards away from fatigue, this is not Fell Reaver at all. With Fell Reaver, your opponent controls things, right? And it has eight health, and it's going to stay around a lot. And if your opponent starts doing weird combo -y things, especially now that there's like fireflies and whatever around, like you can right. get kind of screwed. Like there is like a serious loss condition with Fell Reaver, even if it triggers very rarely. It can trigger and it's out of your control. The loss condition here pretty much doesn't exist. Yeah. Um, the drawback, I know it feels bad for a lot of players to see those cards getting mm -hmm. burned, but the drawback is uh, so negligible. And um, one extra stat makes uh, a lot of difference. Um, I see a lot of people saying it is just one stat. Just one stat makes the, the difference of many, many points on the tier list. Yes, um, many, and many you points. Can, Certainly find situations in which the one stat doesn't matter, but stats matter. That that, that it is what it is, right? Otherwise, mm -hmm. you can say, oh, a three three is like uh basically the same as a three four, you know, a four five is basically the same as a five five. No, it's not. There are lots of situations in which it does matter, but what we know that the cards 
rarely matter when they're burned off the top of your deck. Yep. And again, I just want to point out, these two cards, Hildner Frost Rider and Ke uh, Keating Banshee, rated very similarly, even though the 3-mana three drop, the three mana 4-4 four four has a much bigger downside. Because the 3-mana curve, when you're having a good card for the curve, is really that important compared to a 4-mana curve. And the 4-mana curve is still pretty important. That's why Yeti's so high, right? Like, Yeti's not that high if the 4-mana curve doesn't matter. Like, you know how low Yeti was in Angora? Like, we have been bumping that thing down. It used to be top of the game, right? And then it, like, it's been dying. It's, it's back up a little now. It's kind of good to see. Um, okay, next card. Grim Necromancer is a 105. It is around Darien Reporter Naga Corsair level. Um, it is 4 mana, 2 4. Battle Cry summon 2 1 1 skeletons. So. It's like uh, a Razor Fen Hunter, um, but like much, much better. If you look at a Razor Fen Hunter, because this is like the comparison, right? What else is summoning like two one ones? If you look at Razor Fen Hunter, it's a ninety six. It's a lot lower uh, than a Grim Necromancer, even though that has three attack on turn three. This has uh, this has four attack on turn four. So. What's the difference, Murps? Why is this significantly better? Not like amazingly better, but significantly better nonetheless than a Razor Fen Hunter. Right. Or, uh, you know, another comparison is a Dragon Wing Mechanic, right? Yes. Um, another card th that you might think of is Dragon Wing Mechanic because the initial body is a 2 4, and with Dragon Wing Mechanic, you get a 2 1. With this, you get double 1 1s. Mm -hmm. And you definitely prefer double 1 1s. And what it does, even though uh, when I first looked at the card, I was just like, I don't want this card, right? Two four plus double one ones. But you get a lot of bodies and you get to preserve your options, right? They need to hit into a lot of the stuff. You, uh, and then the ability to come back to your turn with, uh, you know, with a high chance of, of getting initiative with one of the minions. That's pretty good. Look, this card is not premium at all, right? Mm -hmm. Like Yeti is 111, this is 105. But this is one of those cards that definitely sort of, you know, the more I thought about it, the, the more I was just like, it's not as bad as I initially saw it to be, which I'm looking at a 4-mana 2-4 and summoning 2-1-1s. One, I'm just like, oh, that's terrible. But I think this card will, uh, you know, surprise some people as to its, like, it, not suckiness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. And that's the best way to put it, because it looks like it sucks. It definitely yeah. looks like it sucks. But you're running through the algorithm, the algorithm's like, it's pretty good-ish. Uh, it's above average. And you're like, huh? yeah. how's it above average? Everything that looks like it is below average. And it's because that second 1-1 one, one really makes that much of a difference. Yeah, yeah, it really does. And um, I, I, once again, cards... You, you know, I, I think cards like Grim Necromancer, in which really annoying mid-sized bodies i've come to appreciate a little bit more so stuff like arcano smith as well right yeah uh, that sort of just like give you initiative sort of stall a little bit um they they do have their use uh not only in previous metas like they will definitely have their use in uh in kft um and, and perhaps you could say even more like you know more of a use than uh these cars do now mm -hmm. All right. All right, Grave Shambler. Next card is Grave Shambler, four mana, four four elemental. Whenever your weapon is destroyed, gain plus one plus one. Look, it'll have different scores in uh, in different classes slightly, but we're looking at a four mana, four four elemental. Not anything fancy here. It is a ninety four. That's it. Yep. Um, and yeah. That's, yeah. that that kind of that kind of sums it up. And if you're wondering, this kooky chemist is is wrong right now. I don't know what's happened to it. We'll, By the way, we'll guys, the tier list. yeah, there are quite a few. Because uh, I see some people are like, why is Guru Bashi Berserker the best card? Guru Bashi Berserker is the best card in the game. No, and it's not. It's um, not. There's so, a there's a bug happening with how it's it's gaining uh that's gaining attack. Right. And it is being so, fixed right now. Yes. Uh, so the next card we have uh, after Grave Shambler is. Saranite Chain Gang, which is a four mana two three taunt that says Battle Cry summon a copy of this minion, and we've seen this before as well. It's uh, we've seen it in Feral Spirit, 
We've seen uh, a similar card in uh, Infested Torn as well. Mm-hmm. Nothing fancy about it. It's uh, split bodies with taunt. It can be useful sometimes, but it's pretty weak and it can easily be uh, be dominated. Yep. Um, I, I do want to look at this card uh, again tonight and see why why it is where where it is because I initially thought it'd be like around where Grim Necromancer is. Uh, not because two threes are particularly good on four. Like, part of the... But, like, two threes aren't particularly good on three mana either, right? And, like, it kind of oh. works out to uh, with for the Shaman, uh, even though it eventually costs them five mana. So, I don't know. Maybe this will go up. We'll see what happens with it. But I definitely have my eye on this as, uh, as something to look deeper into. Yeah, sounds good. Um, okay, now we're getting to bad four drops. I'm going to run over these very quickly. Night Howler, 4 mana, 3, 4. When this minion takes damage, gain plus 2 attack. That's basically Enrage. It's not going to take damage more than once. So you have a Aberrant Berserker, and it is like, you know, has a very tiny percent chance of getting the, the additional upside. And it, it's missing one health, which makes it less likely to Enrage in the first place. Right? Yep. Like, it, it has problems. Yep. Uh, next card is Phantom Freebooter, 4 mana, 3, 3 Pirate. That says battle cry gain stats equal to your weapons. Remember, uh, the rating that we're giving it right now is a neutral rating, so it it's going to be pretty bad. And the neutral rating we give it is a fifty nine, uh, and it will have different scores for different classes. Next, uh, we have wicked skeleton. Man, these scores are pretty low, and uh, that the cards kind of justify the low score. Uh, four mana one one with battle cry gain plus one plus one for each minion that died this turn so we can have like you know the consecration or blizzard dream uh but most of the time you are not getting good stats so this is a 58 that's that is not so good and finally taking abomination at the (laughs) bottom of the five drop stuff i don't know what else to say about this it's a it's such a bad card on curve because it means you can't curve out the next turn so, yes, it will eat your opponent's card, but what is the point of that if you can't play play a minion on the next turn when you're eating your opponent's card, you know? Yeah. Like, why? What does that accomplish on the curve? Nothing. It's a horrible curve card. Now, where is it possibly good at? It's actually possibly good in, like, the later game where you may eat something and then, like, hang out for a bit and then, like, Try to do some weird stalling thing. Because 5 damage to your minis kind of kills everything. Um, yeah. And so it's just... It's it's pretty bad. I can see it moving up a bit, but it's never going to be impactful. Like, the stat I'm... distribution is so troll, right? Like, you don't want... Like, if you want uh, an overstatted sort of minion on 4 that has a huge downside, you want it to die fast. Like, you want it to die really quickly. Yeah. But this thing is beefy at the same time. Like, this is not going to ever be over, like, Oasis, Snapchat, or Arcanal Smith, right? Like, we'll play with it. We'll see how it is. Maybe our our assumptions about, about like, how bad it is for your curve is wrong. I think it's fine. Um, but even if it is uh, better, it's not going to be an actual draftable card. You're down here, and, like, these don't matter. These cards are yes. just not going to draft. Um Yep. Yeah, and when I say these cards, the Drakes are, are using wrong numbers right now. We'll get that fixed. Um, okay. Let's look at the five drops. Corpse Razor. Corpse Razor is a five mana, three, three with battle cry. Give a friendly minion death rattle, resummon this minion. Um, so it is at a 124 and it's just a good ability like the the fact that you can play something and uh you know it it forces either a silence or uh it forces like a i don't know just you know some trick for them in order to kind of for you to not get value out of this yeah this is very very different and again right it doesn't have that much higher score than a death speaker but that's no. because it's five mana. Uh, but right. it is a very, very different card than a Death Speaker. You do not have to have a minion on the board with initiative while your opponent has another minion that it is good for your minion with initiative to hit into. Yes. That's a series of conditionals. Instead, 
This can be played at any time as long as you have a minion. Your minion could even be injured, and it's fine. Because it'll just resummon itself into its glorious, like, I don't know, Ultra Sore original self, right? Like, this is pretty insane value. Ancestral Spirit is pretty insane value by itself. It used to be, like, one of the highest rated cards in Shaman. Not, like, the very top, but, like, you take maybe, like, sixth or seventh highest rated Shaman card uh, on our tier list. Um, so, yeah. So, it is, uh, it is very, very good. Um, next is a very similarly rated card. Yep. Oh, I, I guess that's a transition for me to talk about it. Yeah, um, you, you're the one that really likes this card. I do. I actually do really like this card. It's Sunborn Valkyr. Five mana, five four with battle cry. Give adjacent minions plus two health. I like this. Um, it once again goes with your theme of reward the board, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and. If it hits two minions, it's fantastic. Um, if it just hits one minion, I think it's absolutely fine as well. And this is one of those cards in which it, it, I think it just hits a sweet spot because plus two health um, is quite good. Like you have a lot of minions that uh, in which its attack and health is within one of each other, right? right. For example, Sunborn Valkyr. Uh, and if you're able to buff something by two health, it's a, you're able to just get that trade and then really put your opponent in a, uh, in a tough spot. So, mm -hmm. yep. It, uh, like the reason that, um, the reason that Defender of Argus is good is the reason some board of is good. And this yeah. one has better stats, but it doesn't give the taunt and it doesn't give the additional attack with initiative. Um, and it's a fair trade off. Uh, Cobalt Scalebane, another um, highly rated card. This one is um, around New Yeti level, a little higher than New Yeti. Um, it's a good curve card, 5 mana, 5-5, five, five, Dragon. At the end of your turn, give another random friendly minion plus 3 attack. So, technically, it's like 8 stats. Like, sorry, 13 stats for 5 mana. And 5 mana usually gets 11. And that's like, right. at the very least, right? If it gets killed the next turn you will get that many stats. So it sounds like it's, like, super overpowered. Um, but it's not really that overpowered, mostly because, one, you can't control which minion it gets it if uh, if you have it, uh, if you have a, a larger board. So your opponent can just remove the one with low health that gets the plus three attack. Two, if you don't have another minion, you don't get the attack. It's just a five mana, five, five. And three, these end of turn effects have just historically never been that good. Right, right. We have seen that if it is an end of turn effect, there needs to be a lot of either safety involved or the effect has to be huge, right? Mm -hmm. And the card I'm thinking about is like Grime Street Enforcer. Right. Grime Street Enforcer is a card that um, that really uh, uh, it works because of these two factors. Grime Street Enforcer gives everyone in your hand plus one, plus one, which is really nice, right? It takes a card for that, like Smuggler's Run. Um, and opponents, as of right now, can't really mess around with your hand. You know, they can kill minions on the board. They can do a lot of stuff. But um, end of turns uh, effects, like we've seen with uh, Master Swordsmith, although that's not fair to Master Swordsmith. <laughs> it's, it's too small of a card. But um, yeah, like... One of the reasons why Sunborn Valkyr is higher is just, like, you get the effect and you get to use it immediately, right? And that mm. is so valuable. And with this Cobalt Scale Bane, even if you have stuff on the board, like you said, you don't know where it's going to hit and you don't get to use it until the next turn. So that the value goes down significantly, even though it is an amazing ability because plus three attack just raises something to uh the next level yep so next one goes down a lot actually this is uh this is quite significantly down compared to a lot of the other cards it is a venomancer it is a two five poisonous at five mana poison is no longer as good um like at three mana it's pretty good at two mana it's amazing at five mana you're kind of expected to kill most things on the board anyway um, yeah. and you can't hit face so it's good um, but it has its limits uh, going down further Skelemancer uh, is a 86 which is draftable but you probably don't want to draft it and this is a 5 mana 2-2 two, two death rattle if it's your opponent's turn summon an 8-8 eight, eight skeleton 
Like if it dies on your opponent's turn. So you know what this means? You oh you always have initiative with a two two for yeah. five. Yeah. <laughs> that you can't hit into anything unless right. you don't want the eight eight, which you're probably never gonna get. It has one purpose and one purpose only in this game. Yeah. Its purpose is to say you cannot board clear me. No. Which is fair, right? Mm -hmm. And it has its place, and, and that's why its score isn't like completely, you know, mm -hmm. gutter tier. It's, it by creating something that's quote untouchable, it does have a place. But man, it uh, you're really giving up a lot of stats for that. Yeah, you can't play it on turn five, right? You'll lose the yeah. board. So it's not playable on turn five. It's not playable on turn six. It's probably not playable on turn seven. It's like a turn ten play. Um, one of the things I really like about what the algorithm does is it like actually turn by turn plans your entire thing and it sees what's on the board and what can like happen. Mm -hmm. And it it very clearly like it's like oh this card is like just not playable, way too often. It's a dead card in your hand way too often. Um, and that's true. It it really is. The problem is not like. Oh, I have a board and I play it. It's great if you have a board and you play it. It's even okay if on turn like ten or whatever you play it and then you play like a tiger or something. It like right. it's passable. But the moments in which it shines is the anti board clear moments. And those moments kinda happen. Um and if you're an aggro deck, maybe you want to include something like this just to prevent your loss condition. Uh, yeah. But again, right, like, there's plenty of these kind of tech cards, and they just don't get rated very high. Yeah, and, and I see people, for example, in the chat saying, like, wait, 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 but it's amazing with Taunt. Yeah, you know what's also amazing with Taunt? Humongous Razor Leaf. It's like, you can always think of situations, and we're like, oh, all you need to do is Taunt it. All you need to do is buff it. It's like, you can say that for a lot of cards that are already in the arena that are really, really bad really really bad um and yes it has certain benefits to it as in like it can attack unlike humongous razor leaf but uh if you need a specific condition to make a card good and it's pretty worthless without that condition it's just not a good card yep yeah all right uh blood worm so now, I guess this is when we talk about lifesteal. Okay, so lifesteal is in the game now. You Woo! you steal life. Uh, whenever you hit something, you get life. Whenever you hit his face, you get life. Whenever something hits it, you get life. If you use a weapon to remove it, you get some life. Five mana, four, four, heal four to your face. That's not a good card. Five mana, four, four, heal eight to your face. Well, now you're kind of talking. Now you're better than a uh, than a uh, anti kill bot, right? Which was like a vaguely playable card. And remember, this is 81. It may look like it's at the bottom of the list, and next to it is just a whole bunch of bug cards. <laughs> so it may look like it's like the worst five drop ever. Uh, you know, a little higher than like night blades and whatever. Um, but that's not really. That's not really uh, its issue. The main issue is that five drops these days are actually all pretty good. So yeah. 81 is like playable, right? The game has kind of like slowed down a bit. And we're trying, like our tier list is pushing it back up because the curve is getting more important. But it still recognizes that if your game starts on three, the new four drop then is a five drop. So yeah. all the five drops are doing quite well. And... Um, this guy just kind of gets left behind. It, it does its job sometimes. It's just... Yeah. Like, what happens, right? When you need life, what do you need? You need it now. Who needs life, like, later? <laughs> I, I, I didn't mean that philosophically. I meant that with, like, in the game of Hearthstone. But yes, philosophically, too. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, thanks, thanks. Very nice. Okay, but again, not an undraftable card. All right? No, not an undraftable card at all. Uh, just yeah. also not good. Like, I don't know if anyone's actually rating it as, like, a great card. Um, and it can. It can, like, heal you from, like, four health all the way back up to full if your opponent can't get rid of it. Um, but at that point, really, unless you're facing Hunter, all you need is, like, eight health and you're out of, like, the range of everything. So it's just, yeah. like, one very specific matchup that Lifesteal is, like, really good against. And otherwise, it's just an understated, like, minion. Yeah. 
All right. So should we move on to the next mana? Yes. Turn six. Let's uh, let's go from the bottom to the top now. Oh, okay, okay. All right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so first we have Spell Weaver, uh, which is a six mana four four that says spell damage plus two. We have seen uh, a variant of this in Archmage, right? Which is a six mana four seven that only gives plus one spell damage. So you are going more into the spell damage uh, and then giving up some stats. Yep. And it is a 79, which means it's not the most unpickable card, but it's pretty bad. Mm -hmm. It is pretty freaking bad. And once again, guys, because I will inevitably see uh, this message, do not look at the scores for other cards. <laughs> yep. um, there, there are lots of weird things going on. So focus on the new cards that we are talking about. And there's some weird things going on in new cards too. Necrotic Gaze, for example, is not really 85. It's no, it's higher it's than that. Um, and I I know what's wrong with this card right now, but uh, it, it'll end up being somewhere around like 100. Um, it is yeah. not a great card. I thought it would be better, but then you think about it some more. Like it does chain with itself, but it only has three health. So right, it's gonna be dead and six mana for three health. Yeah, like it's it's going to be dead. Um, so. Uh, that's really its main problem. Um, it's not an 85. It's going to be somewhere around a 100. Uh, there's a... a anyway. Um, the way you play it is you have a board, right? You play this card. You throw some things in. Um, you want to get two ghouls, and then it's kind of a worth it to be a 6-6. Six, six. If you get one ghoul, yeah. you're not really like... You don't want a 5-3-2-2 two, two, two stat distribution <laughs> in your in your, in your your 6-drop or your 6-mana card. Um but if you can throw two things in and kill two things, well, now you're kind of in business because even if they remove your necrotic gate, uh, a gaze, it's already gotten its value. Uh, and they will remove it pretty quickly. It's, right. It has very low ability to survive on the board. Yeah. So Kilgram Arrow says, uh, I thought Murphs was saying this was OP. So uh, for those, and, and I wanted to stress this because if you've been listening to um, like the Lightforge, we also talked about this card. Uh, but for me uh, it's really about like the design of the card that i don't like um and it mm -hmm. stems from like the standard deviation of the results uh, like from this card is just so huge right like it could be nothing and mm -hmm. because of what you said you're paying six mana for five three uh and if you are sort of not on the board it is so useless for you or if you are completely dominating, or not even dominating, if like you are able to snowball and your opponent doesn't have a response, you just win the game single-handedly with this. And it's these huge standard deviation cards, which I'm just like, I don't, I, I, I don't like them, and I'm also trying to think why Blizzard printed them. But that's another question uh, for another time that will never come. So that's fine. All right, now the good cards, Bone Drake. 128 oh it is a really really insanely good card it's um, so freaking good yeah you, you here you should talk about it like about, okay card. so this card is good not because the six mana six five draw a random card is good it's still pretty good if it was six mana six five draw a random card like it'll be definitely above average yeah. um but the dragons are insane you have like what like only what was it like 16 dragons in the entire game right now uh in standard yeah. Something, something like that. Something like that. So that means you have 1 in 16 chance of getting a Deathway, 1 in 16 chance of getting a Nexia, 1 in 16 chance of getting... There are not a lot of bad dragons. There are very, very few bad dragons. And, like, Fairy Dragon would be pretty bad to get out of this. Not because Fairy Dragon's bad, but because, uh, you know, you're in the late game now, so it's no longer functioning as a 2-drop. Um, you have Bookworm, which is not terribly great, because you don't have a dragon in your hand anymore, probably. So it's just a 3-6 for 5 mana. And I think that's it. I think the rest are all like pretty decently sized at the very least, if not just like downright game winning. You have a six percent chance of getting Deathwing. You have a six percent chance of getting Ysera, six percent chance of getting a Nixia, six percent chance of getting Alexstraza, six percent chance of Primordial Drake. So you can get this you... card back, Bone Drake. Oh, sorry. Right. So you got another shot. You have a six percent chance of Drake. So if, if those are just the ones that you want, you have a 36% chance approximately of getting, uh, you know, something within that group. That's pretty good. And there are other uh, dragons 
that are really good as well, right? Um, you know, just like you could just quote just get a Draconid operative, um, which uh, could further help you get more dragons as well. Uh, so this card, very powerful and will decide many games, which I am not so happy about. But yes, this will decide <laughs> it's random. It's so RNG. many games. It's RNG. Yeah. And it's not like you get a dragon that's super powerful. You get a dragon that's game winning. Like that's the yeah. point of some of these things. Like that's why they're legendary because you're not supposed to see them that often in the arena. Yeah, definitely. And finally, <laughs> the power creep always happens, huh? The power oh creep always gosh. happens. All right, so we have come to the end of our uh, common or neutral commons and rares. And we are at the highest mana cost card, which also happens to be the highest tier score card uh, that we're going to be talking about. It is Bone Mare. Advocate, tell us about Bone Mare. It is a 10 mana card that is a 5 5 and gives a friendly minion plus 4 plus 4 and taunt. So, like 10 mana, you mean it should be 10 mana? I mean, or... I, I mean, you know, if it was fairly statted, that would be a 5 mana card and a 4 mana card, and then you would lose a mana because you're putting them together the way Arger Commander does. Um, but no, but no, we're in the new un post Ungoro card design world in which this card can exist and is a common too. It's not even like a rare, it is actually a common. Yeah. Not that it matters in the arena anymore, but just to give you an idea of what the designers wanted this game to be about. It's a 152. Acetic Swampoos and Stubborn Gastropod are 141s. Right? And also, it's like because Bone Drake is a 128. Right. Bog Creeper is a 129. Volcanosaur is a 126. Like, this is in yeah. a league of its own, essentially. For a seven mana card to match up with these like tempo plays in the arena, it has to do something like this. Right. And it does. It's the seven mana game winning card if you have anything on the board. It's so insane. Um, because all you have to do is have something, right? Mm -hmm. And Bone Mare is so meta defining because just like when you face Paladins going into turn six, now when you face any class going into turn seven you have to think mm. oh gosh can i can i win with them hitting a bone mare on one of their minions yes. right on the bright side only one body taunts true oh yeah yeah, yeah of course so uh, you're not but, as screwed as aggro but it still taunts why why does it taunt why does a bone know. mare taunt i have no idea it doesn't make any sense just like how i asked the same question for spike ridge steed i'm just like what Anyways, this goes into design questions, which uh, I, uh, we don't need to bring up. But yeah, this is uh, kind of the meta now. And you need to very carefully evaluate if you can afford to let them bone mare on turn seven. Or if you even have a choice, right? Yep. You just say, no, I just lose if they have it. And everyone's going to be picking this card. It, it has an offering bonus as well, so you're going to see it quite off on turn 7. Yep. And so um, I'm going to just uh, wrap up this uh, this common rare thing, with because this is the backbone of the arena now. It's going to be these cards. They have the offering rate bonus. The classic cards have an offering rate anti-bonus of 50%. So these are the cards that are going to be in the meta. No two drops. One one drop that is a one drop and is also a buff. A decent number of pretty good threes and um a large number of like five six and like one seven that everyone will pick that will kind of dominate a lot of buffs a lot of buffs so what you want to do again is to get on the board what you're going to be unable to do is to get on the board with the curve but you want to do that so that's step one and that's why all a lot of these like small cards like especially at the three drop curve but also a good number of two drops is uh they're rated really super highly now on the flip side these late game cards, I don't know if you noticed, but they've also been kind of kind of growing up. Like Ultra Sword is a 105 now. Ultra Sword was was significantly lower in uh, in, in Angoro, but because like one of the uh, one of our themes, right? Like Fat lives, and because Fat lives, and because your game starts on three more often, you're gonna hit turn ten more often. You're gonna hit turn seven more often. These big guys are going to actually get their value more often. 
So you can actually win a game through an Ultra Sword. It's not just something that's like begging you to. You will still also lose plenty of games by playing Ultra Sword and getting it hard removed, but you can actually win more games now too. So it kind of balances it out. So overall, this is doing the same thing that Ungoral Offering Bonus was doing back in uh, back in April and May. It's it's basically uh, pushing to the poles, polarizing the two like two types of archetypes, right? Where it's giving tools to allow you to be, uh, not to allow you to be on the board, but to allow you to take advantage of a board if you can get the board. And then it's also allowing you to use like large minions and not if you have the control cards to be able to eventually say, my one card is worth three of your cards. <laughs> Deal with it, right? Yeah. Um, so it's more diversity in the arena, but it does mean that a lot of games are determined by rock, paper, scissors. You're going yeah. to like meet a bad matchup and just not have any chance. You'll lose. All right, so welcome to the Bone Mare meta. You will see this card a lot. You will draft this card a lot. You will win a lot because of this card, and you will lose a lot because of this card. Mm -hmm. All right, and Twitch chat, for those who are looking up here and saying we're ad blocking our own site, it's the test server. There are no ads on the test server, so it's showing the thing behind the ad. <laughs> but if you do use our site, please don't ad block it. Um, okay, once again, a huge shout out to. Um, uh, the dev team behind the Life Forge tier list. It was a journey of like hundreds of hours to get this thing uh, ready for this expansion because, as you can see by some of the not totally right scores here, uh, the back end and the front end are having a little trouble connecting um, in a in a good way. So we'll uh, we'll fix that after the stream. Um, but uh, also a huge shout out to uh, to created our uh, our YouTube manager, epically tossed our twelve win uh, our twelve win editor, and um, you know all of our patrons at patreon.com slash grinning goat. Um, if you like the YouTube uh, episodes, if you um, watch our twelve win runs or the arena coop, uh, please consider supporting us. Uh, it um, it really makes a difference. All right, we're moving on to the epics and legendary next. Let's do it. Okay, you want to just power through? Yes, power we through. need to. 